Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women. And today we're talking about empowering business women through the generations. I'm joined in the studio by my guest, Alexandra Levitt, business and workplace author, speaker and consultant. Formerly a nationally syndicated columnist for the Wall Street Journal and writer for the New York Times, Fast Company and Forbes, Alexandra has co-authored the new book, Mom BA, Essential Business Advice from One Generation to the Next. What a great topic for a book. I really can't wait to hear more. Welcome to the show, Alexandra. Thanks so much for having me, Anna. It's great to be here. So can I start by asking you, well, basically, I love that you're an expert in writing both articles and books, because many people find that difficult. Also, your range of topics, corporate, the next generation of leaders, reinvention, and the future of work, is fascinating. So how did you start, and why the focus on these topics? Well, the way that I started, Anna, was more or less by accident. I was a high-achieving student uh, in the United States. I attended a Northwestern University, um, which is a a very good college here, and had gotten straight A's. And all my life, I had been this high-achieving person who really accomplished whatever I set my mind to do. But when I graduated and took a job at a PR agency, my career pretty much crashed and burned. Uh, My first boss hated me so much that I thought I had killed a relative. I would constantly watch people with half my work ethic get promoted ahead of me. And really, it, it was not a good situation and took me a few years before one of my bosses took pity on me and said, Alex, I think you could use some professional development. And she sent me to a course called the Dale Carnegie course, which is uh, a class that's really very helpful in terms of helping you understand how you need to develop, how you can be more diplomatic, solve problems, uh, tell people your contributions in a way that that makes them appreciate and value you. And that was when this light bulb went off. And I was like, wow, someone should really clue in other 20-somethings on how to survive that transition from being a high-achieving college student to the business world. And that was when I got the idea for my very first book, which was called They Don't Teach Corporate in College, A 20-Something's Guide to the Business World. And I did publish that book, and much to my pleasure and surprise, it did well, and I started getting asked to write more articles, do more speaking engagements, and get out there as as a workplace expert, which, of course, in the beginning, I wasn't. I just researched a book. But after doing it for a few years, I started learning about these topics, and Then when I started writing for the Wall Street Journal, my audience got a bit broader. So originally it was just 20-somethings. And then uh, I gradually began to to speak to people who were facing other types of issues, like how to reinvent themselves in their careers, how to take their organizations to the next level in the evolving workplace. And uh, that was how I broadened my topic base a little bit. Um, But I've had fun. It's been great. I could never have told you when I graduated from college um, almost 10 years ago that this was going to be the path my career would take, but uh, it has been enjoyable, surprising, wonderful every step of the way. I, I mean, I know it's very difficult when you first start out and everything goes wrong, but when you do get one of those light bulb moments and you really start to understand, and then you can pass that knowledge on to other people, for you, it must be so rewarding because you, yeah. you know you're helping. Absolutely. It's why I do what I do. And you know what, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Anna, the, the speaking part of it is is a little bit difficult for me. I tend to be more of an introvert. So going out there and getting in front of large groups is, is tough. It's not the most natural, comfortable thing for me, but it allows me to help large numbers of people. And, and you're right, when someone comes up to me afterward and says, I'm going to take that piece of advice, I'm going to use it to turn my career around, that really does make all the discomfort worthwhile. And, yes. and that's why I do what I do, because it, it really does allow me to, to help others avoid some of the agita that I experienced, because I went years without um, enough advice to really make a go of it. And so I'm hoping that other people don't have to spend that much time. Wonderful. Okay, so you've now got another new book out, Mom BA. So yeah. why did you decide to write this book? 
Well, this this book, Mom BA, Essential Business Advice from One Generation to the Next, uh, it's actually the brainchild of Karen Schombard, who's the CEO of the NPD Group, which is a global market research firm. And Karen wanted to write this book based on her relationship with her daughter, Danielle, who is a member of the millennial generation. So she's now 30, but she's an accomplished businesswoman in her own right. And one of the reasons she's so accomplished is that she grew up having a female CEO for a mom. And learned so many lessons about how to make a good first impression, how to navigate workplace politics, how to develop effective relationships, build your skills, set priorities. And so when Danielle went out into the business world, she was able to to rise relatively quickly in comparison to her, uh, to her counterparts because of everything she learned from Karen. And Karen is, is, is a wonderful role model for me as well as Danielle, because she's very, very charismatic, very friendly, very down to earth. But yet she's really learned the, the, the nuances of what it takes to be a successful female leader, which is very, very difficult in today's world. And as we know, there aren't many of them. Yeah. So I think we take her lessons to heart. And I personally have learned so much from her in the process of collaborating with her on this book. Oh, wonderful. So what is the essence of the book? The essence of the book is is the lessons really that uh, Karen has learned over the course of her career from she started off in entry level market research and and basically almost through her entire career she's been um, with the same organization and just rising from you know, junior level to, to the very top the pinnacle the CEO role and uh, it, it talks a lot about how she's managed to do that. And I think what's unique about the book is that it really is in Karen's voice. You get the sense of how someone can be a really strong leader, but also a really good person, which I think a lot of people struggle with. They think, well, to get to these top positions, you have to make massive life sacrifices. You have to be a cold, uncaring person. And I think it's really inspiring the way Karen has not done that. She has kept true to herself. She has uh, really raised a wonderful family. She stayed married. <laughs> She's had a wonderful husband, Brad, uh, for, for many, many years now. And uh, it, it proves that, you know, it is all possible to do. Now, it's not going to be perfect, and Karen doesn't say that it will be. Uh, but there are decisions that you can make and pragmatic advice you can take in order to drive your life and your career in the direction that you want. And for young women who are hoping to aspire to that senior leadership position, I think it's invaluable. Okay. So does it talk about um, the, the sort of different challenges that she had to overcome at, at different ages and stages of her career? Yeah, absolutely. And it talks about, um, I love when she is talking about her early career with the different bosses she had and why different bosses were good for different reasons. And Karen likes to refer to managers as notches in the belt. You know, it's like you're going to have some that are great, some that are not as great, but you can learn from all of them. And at different times in your life and your career, there's going to be managers that are better for you and, and not as good for you. And it's all a matter of making the best of the experience. And I think Karen's a very optimistic person. So that helps her in getting into difficult situations where ordinary people would be knocked down by them. But she just gets back up and says, what can I learn from this? Uh, She talks about the challenges when she was promoted um, to her first leadership position and she perceived that as being too early. She didn't think she was ready for it. She talks a lot about the imposter syndrome that women tend to have where, oh, I can't do this job. I don't have 100% of the qualifications. Someone else would be better. And how she just had to go and embrace it at, at a certain point. So she talk, she does talk about the different junctures and some of the issues that, that we as women um, universally face. And the book is not um, exclusively for women, yeah. but um, it definitely uh, resonates if you you are you know just a young professional in general who's looking to move up that sounds great i'll have to give it to my daughter <laughs> we would love that <laughs> so so what was it like working with her because i'm sure you're used to talking to men and women and working with men and women just as much and possibly even more men because it tends to still be a male dominated world so mm-hmm. what was it like working with a female ceo particularly about the book's development process? Yeah, that, that's a good question, Anna. And it, it was different from any book that I've done thus far. I mean, I have six other books that I've written solo. Um, this is the first collaboration um, that I have done. And it worked out really well. And what I've learned is that this it's, it's such a personal experience and a personal journey. I think you have to be really careful with a collaboration like this that 
the two people working on it uh, sync up really well, that our personalities and our work styles really complemented each other because you could see how this would easily be a situation where it didn't work out so well. And I think um, because Karen and I developed a genuine friendship in addition to a great business working relationship, um, that was the reason that it worked. I mean, we started off, we, we, I guess we started off two years ago now talking about the structure. And there's a lot of people out there who say they want to write a book. But what really sets apart people who, who actually write books from people who want to write books is, okay, well, what's each chapter going to have in it? Like, do I have enough content to fill this? And if I don't, where am I going to get the content from? Yeah. What order are the chapters going to be in? What supplementary information do we need? Who do we need to interview? Um, where are we going to get our sources from? Like, those are all the things that have to be considered. And so we started off with that. And then once we had an outline and we knew the plan, which is the hard part early on, it was just kind of turnkey from that. Karen did a lot of the writing by herself. She wrote all of her own stories and I just edited and supplemented where, um, where necessary. And it really um, worked out really well. I'm, I'm very pleased with how it worked out overall, not just how the book came out, but the fact that I've developed a lifelong mentor and friend as well. Yeah, that's fabulous. I mean, what a, a wonderful opportunity when you've got that as well. Mm -hmm. so you you were t saying that you've learned a lot of leadership lessons from her. So give me some examples. What were the most important ones that you learned? Well, the most important one that I learned personally, Anna, so this is one that I've directly applied to my own business, is knowing your own value. Yeah. Uh, this is something that I, I mean, not uncommonly with women, but I have struggled with in the sense that I have now a, a body of expertise that spans about almost 14 years. I've been studying the same topics, reading the research, doing my own research, mm -hmm. uh, talking to tens of thousands of people, and yet I still sometimes debate whether or not I'm charging too much for this intellectual property, for this knowledge, for organizations to be able to apply it. And the truth is, like that is... That is invaluable, the expertise that, that I have developed. And, and I really learned that from Karen, that it's not just about the hour that you spend showing up at a speaking engagement, for example. It's about those 14 years. Karen tells a, a great story, a couple of them in the book, about um, that, that are in, on that similar theme of it's not just for the like five minutes that you spend doing the work. It's about all the knowledge you've had to accumulate since you started your career and that's really what an organization or a person or a client is paying for. It's not that, that time that you show up, but it's about all the, the things that you bring to the table. So knowing your value and being able to charge appropriately is something that's really important. Another lesson that I, I have really tried um, to implement, I have trouble with confrontation. I have trouble with when people get angry or when I'm in a difficult situation, I tend to retreat and not address the situation as proactively or effectively as I could. Yeah. And from Karen, I've learned, you know what, the problem doesn't get easier as more time goes by. So you want to make sure that you are taking really concise, quick action to solve a problem so that you can get through the stages of problem solving. You know, every situation has a beginning and middle of an end, she says, and you want to get through those three stages as quickly as possible so that you can resolve the issue and get your relationship back on track. So I've been trying to do that more instead of avoiding things and just hoping they'll go away. <laughs> I know that sounds great because um, I know exactly what you mean with that. I hate situations that I know are going to be really conflictual um, and I always try and avoid it. But if you jump right in and deal with it quickly, it's less stressful. So yeah, I think that's absolutely. a wonderful lesson. You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. Okay, so what will the readers get out of Mom BA that's unique to this particular book? What I think that readers will get out that's unique to this particular book um, is Karen's story specifically. There are so few female CEOs. We just don't have enough role models to show how can this actually work? Because when you hear the stories of male CEOs, you tend to, like, almost every male CEO will say something like, oh, I, I couldn't have done it without my wife who doesn't work, who took care of all of our household stuff. And I was just able to go to work and, and work 80 hours a week if I needed to and do whatever I had to do for my career. That's a common story that you'll hear from male CEOs. And Karen's life has not been like that. She's always been very involved with her children. She's kept her friends. She's had hobbies. 
Um, again, it hasn't been perfect. There's something she'll tell, she tells you in the book she's had to sacrifice, but the way that she's gone about her career in a very strategic fashion and the way that she's been able to remain true to herself while doing so, I think is something that you really won't read in a lot of books. And of course, she's just got really great nuggets um, in all sorts of places. She talks about managing her global expertise, about how, how she went over to Europe and Asia and how she learned how to do business there. Um, she talks about uh, a little bit about um, how to inspire other people, not just to be their boss, but to be a real leader and how you can be a leader at any stage in your career, not just when you're an official manager. Yeah. Um, she talks about networking and relationships. She's managed to build a really great network. Um, I've been super impressed, for example, as this book has come out of all the people who have risen up from the woodwork to support Karen. And it's because she's, she's got such a great network where she goes out of her way to meet people in person, to follow up with them via gifts or handwritten notes. I mean, these are the things that people remember. And so even though she's a CEO, she still does a lot of those things. And, and those people are, are willing to support her and this book when it's been most needed. So um, those are some of the lessons that will come through. But I think Readers will find pretty much anything that will be related to getting ahead in your career as a young professional, whether you're a man or a woman, um, they'll find in this book. She, she sounds lovely. I mean, she she sounds, is lovely, Anna. I hope that you have the chance to meet her. <laughs> because she sounds so normal and caring as well as being such a, a great success. She I mean, really is. And that's what makes her a role model. Like you said, we always hear about these women who – rise to the top and they're the, you know, they're the B word and, and they have to be over aggressive. And, and, and Karen is the way that every woman who gets to the top wishes that she could be. Wow. And okay, because it sounds like she's got a different mindset to a lot of people. Um, and I'm very big on mindset and mindset being positive and helping you have peace of mind, helping you encourage other people. So do you think her mindset's different? And also, I've got another question that I wanted to ask you about mindset. Do you see differences in mindset across the generations regarding business? Because I'm sure with the, the research that you did for this book, you must have spoken to lots of generations. So do you think their mindset is different with each generation? And is Karen's particularly special? Um, or is it to do with her generation being more balanced? Or what do you think? It's, it's a great question. And I would say, um, in large part, the, the baby boomer generation that Karen's a part of, uh, the women in particular were very focused on getting ahead. Um, in many cases, they made lots of sacrifices where they worked all the time. They weren't necessarily around for their kids. And it was because they were being given opportunities that they didn't have previously. And they felt like if they didn't seize those opportunities, that they might never get them again. And so the baby boomers were the first generation of women to, to really um, give up a lot in favor of their careers. And I think what made Karen a little bit different is she didn't really do that. I and mean, she did sacrifice some things, but she, she was always about what, what I call work-life integration, yeah. where you know she would try to be fully present for her job when she was there. And when she was with her kids, she tried to be, and her husband, she tried to be fully present for them as well. And of course, it was a little bit uh, helpful in, in her day, you know, 20 years ago when she was raising her kids, that we didn't have all these devices. So it was easier to be off yes. when you were off. Um, but I think that the reason that she's a role model is her mindset was a little bit different from a lot of other women in her generation who had to make the choice. They were either going to be full on career or full on stay at home moms. Yeah. And Karen was one of the first people to balance the two and other people balance the two, but you don't hear about them becoming CEOs. Yeah. And that's what you see with Danielle. So Danielle is again, her daughter. Danielle's a, a member of the millennial generation. And what you see with Danielle and her generation is that th that is very important to them that they get ahead while still maintaining a life and that they do keep that balance. And it's not worth it to get ahead in your career if you don't have hobbies, if you don't have loved ones, if you don't have time to spend with your family and friends. Yeah. And so I, I think that one of the reasons that people, the young people relate to this so much, and e even men, I mean, men have the same needs in the millennial generation for that work-life integration as women do. Yeah. And they're already looking ahead toward having children or they have young children and they want to be involved fathers. So to be able to look at Karen and how she's made that happen 
I think it's a it's a mindset that the millennials have in, in very large numbers that baby boomers didn't necessarily have, but but is a little bit different in Karen's case. You said earlier about one of the other books that you've written, but in fact, you've written several other books which are about corporate career, next generation in the workplace. Mm-hmm. How is Mom BA similar and different to your previous works? Uh, it's a great question. Well, Mom BA is right in my wheelhouse in the sense that it's about careers, getting ahead, advice that will help you um, not only progress in your career, but progress in your life as well and have a, a well-rounded, meaningful uh, meaningful life. Uh, I think that it, the content is similar to my first book, They Don't Teach Corporate and College in the Topical Areas, yeah. but you have, the difference is my story and my experiences versus Karen's have been very, very different. And so I wouldn't say that any of the advice directly contradicts. Like you're not going to find advice on networking and they don't teach corporate and college that is completely against what Karen says in Mom Ye, for example. Um, I would say that they, they're complementary titles to one another yeah. um, because the anecdotes, obviously all, all of Karen's stories and, and her journey um, are unique to Mom BA and, and they don't teach corporate and college. I talk about my journey and how I came to, to give, be giving this kinds of advice. Yeah. And it's also a lot of the advice is just different. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's some overlap, but I wouldn't say it's a whole lot. I, I really wouldn't. Um, and uh, Mom BA has some stuff that they don't teach corporate and college doesn't have. For example, we do a survey says feature at the end of every chapter where we talk about research in a given area. Like what does the research say about whether people should relocate for a job or, you know, whether they can work remotely or, you know, what, what makes a good boss? What makes a bad boss? What makes a good employee? What makes a bad employee? Yeah. We look at academic and corporate research that, that supports or, you know, in some cases disputes our points and we talk about that. So I found that part interesting to work on as well. That's fascinating. Okay. So nearly at the end now, have you got any last tips that you can give us to the really to help prepare for meaningful careers in a future workplace, particularly if you can link it to the different generations? Yes. Well, so baby boomers, I would have to say, so those in Karen's generation, they're I'm working. Me. I'm a boomer. <laughs> and, and you, Anna, as well. So you're working longer and longer. And what you're going to have to figure out is how can you make contributions in a way that's palatable to the lifestyle that you want to have? Does that mean being a contract worker with, with a, uh, a part-time job in, in an established organization? Does that mean that you're volunteering? Does that mean that you have your own side gig? So people really have to start thinking about this. The majority of boomers are headed toward retirement age traditionally. And so it's not really necessarily about the money. Of course, a lot of boomers did lose money in the recession. So it is requiring them to to make money. But it's more about where do you want your life to go the next 20 years? I mean, many boomers are going to live into their 90s and even 100. So what, what do you want that to look like? And you need to start planning for that now. Um, for the Xers, so the Generation X is, is my generation. That's the generation that was born um, right after the boomers, about 1964 to 1979. Mm-hmm. And the X generation is a very small generation in comparison to the boomers and the millennials who come after them. So for the Xers, it's going to be, do you want to be running a company or do you want to remain an individual contributor? And if so, what is your path? Because the Xers are going to be in very, very high demand because they are the most experienced. And a lot of people are going to be tapped for leadership roles that they may not want. So it really requires some soul searching on your part as as a Generation Xer with respect to whether this is going to be something that's meaningful for you or whether you want some other kind of arrangement. Because in the era of career customization, you'll be able to do anything you want, especially with the level of expertise that most Xers have acquired by this point. And then for the millennials, uh, I would say constant uh, retraining, a focus on skill acquisition, really becoming as much of a generalist as you can. Because what we're going to see is as more and more new skills required, new jobs are invented, we're going to have to be very agile. We're going to have to be very flexible. And so for millennials who are you know, at the, in the early stages of their career, it's going to be about making an intelligent next step. I, I don't tell anyone that they should try to plan five to 10 years ahead. We just don't know what's going to happen in the workforce, but gain one skill at a time. Maybe it's an adjacent skill that's related to something you're doing, but not exactly the same. So for example, maybe if you're in human resources and you've been focused on compensation, maybe you move into training and development or onboarding, 
but you gain as many what we call transferable skills as possible. So skills that are relevant across a wide variety of industries and roles. And those will take you far no matter what you decide to do with your career in the long term. Wonderful. Great advice. Thank you very much. So just before we finish, where can people buy your book? Well, they can buy um, all the books on uh, Amazon, uh, Mom BA, They Don't Teach Corporate in College. My book on the future of work will not be out um, until October of next year. So uh, October 1st, 2018 is when they can get that. But uh, KarenShonbart.com is a great place to go. Um, that's K-A-R-Y-N-S-H-O, sorry, S-C-H-O-E-N-B-A-R-T.com. You can always visit AlexandraLevitt.com. That's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-A-L-E-V-I-T. Um, for all the information to keep up with us, uh, we would love to hear Anna um, from your listeners. If you've read either book, if you want to comment, if you have feedback on a further edition um, that might be done, we yep. would love to hear from you. Perfect. And also, please, will you come back next year just before your new book? Because I would love to be able to interview about that as well. So. I would love to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Alexandra. Really, it's been fascinating and a real pleasure. I can't wait for everyone to give the feedback on the book because I think it's wonderful. And to be able to do everything through the generations, help the younger ones with the experience of the older ones, such a good topic for a book. Really amazing. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Great. We'd like to thank our guest, Alexandra Levitt, business and workplace author, speaker and consultant for sharing her expertise on empowering business women through the generations. I'm Anna Letitia Cook. You've been listening to us at Women Up Radio. Thanks also to Meryl Guzel and Laura Martinez of UN Women's Empower Women for the wonderful work they do to advance the case for women's equality today. And thanks to all of you who are listening in. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing Alexandra and all of her advice and the input about the book. And please don't hesitate to contact her to check out her social media. Um, I'll put all of the details on our site as well so you can link to them easily. And 